Now it's time to do our entree. And what we're making today is chicken piccata. And um, I've selected some chicken breasts. They are boneless, skinless chicken breasts. But actually before I start that, I just want to go back a little bit and show those people that feel that peeling a garlic clove is difficult. I'm going to show you a little trick that will make it a little easier for you, especially in the smaller cloves. You get a nice, broad, bladed knife like this. Put your clove on a cutting board. Put the broad part of the knife, especially closer to the handle, over the clove. And with your hand, you give it a nice <laughs> swack. And that separates the skin from the flesh very easily. You can just take it right off and you have your garlic clove ready to chop. Okay, now I'm going to put that to the side and let's get back to our chicken. So we have our chicken. It's boneless and skinless. And I've trimmed off most of the fat because I just don't want that extra saturated fat uh, in my diet. And we're going to pound the chicken because you want to you make the chicken about the same size and width. And usually it's better to keep it about one quarter inch no larger than a half inch in, in thickness. Uh, that way it cooks more evenly and they'll get finished at the same time. Now the best way to pound the chicken, there's several ways you can do it. You can use wax paper and put that down first and put wax paper over the top. But what sometimes happens with that is the chicken adheres to the wax paper. So I'd like to use like a, a plastic bag that closes. And we're going to go ahead and put the chicken into the inside. Okay, I'm going to close the bag. Now this isn't a contest. It's not to see how hard you can pound. Basically what you want to do is use a meat mallet like this. So often they come with a flat side like this and with a side like that. You don't want to use that because you don't want to kill this chicken breast. You just want to pound it lightly. And the best way to start is usually at your thickest part or in the center of it and just lightly pound and pound outward till you have the, the width of the chicken that you want. Like I said, you want it no more than a half an inch. A quarter of an inch is a little bit better. And now we're going to do the other one. Okay, that's good. So now we're finished with that. Now we're going to um, start our stove. Turn that down to a medium. I'm going to add some olive oil to the pan. And I'm going to also add some garlic. What we have here is three cloves of garlic that have been finely minced. Okay, we just want to heat this up and get the garlic started, get its flavor into the oil, give it a chance to blend in there. Just a little bit more. Get the oil hot. All right, it's starting to sizzle, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add the chicken breasts. Second one in. Okay, and we're just going to cook those until they're browned on the outside and juicy on the inside. You would know that they're done when the juices of the chicken run clear. Now if you happen to have um, an instant thermometer, meat thermometer, you might want to use that rather than having to cut the chicken a little bit to check for, for doneness because you stick that in there at 165 degrees, the chicken should be perfect then. So just going to go ahead and, and cook these. OK, 
Okay, now we have our chicken browned. It probably took about three to four minutes for each side, but you want to get the chicken nice and brown. Makes it look a lot better that way. And um, now we're going to put the chicken in the oven, just on a warming plate, because you want to keep it warm while you're making your sauce. So if you'd like to follow me to the oven, we'll go ahead and do that. Yeah. We have a, a plate that I've had in here at about 175 degrees, just keeping it warm. Now we want to use the remnants of the pieces of chicken that are left in our pan to make our sauce. Okay. I'm going to turn the heat back up just a tad. Okay, now our sauce is going to have chicken broth in it. This is the chicken broth. I'm going to add that to the pan. And we're going to stir that around a little bit. Try to lift off some of those pieces of chicken from where we had fried the chicken. Just because that adds a flavor to everything. And we're also going to add to this, I have here some a white dry wine. A good white dry wine to use is a Sauvignon Blanc or a Pinot Grigio is also good. I'm going to add that to it. We also have some lemon juice, so we're going to add that to it. And we're going to mix that around and get that heated up nice and warm. And to this, we're going to add some flour. We want to thicken it just slightly. And you have to sort of stir it pretty often and get that flour mixed in. Try to get all the lumps out of it. As you can see, as I'm doing this, it's already beginning to thicken. And that's going to be the basis of our piccata sauce. Okay, can you, can you see how nice and it's not thick thick but it's getting a little thicker and that's what we want. You don't want it like pudding, you just want it a little thick. I can already smell the flavors coming off of that. So good. Okay, we have our, our piccata the basis of a piccata sauce now. It's, it's thick, it's ready to go, and, and to that we're going to add parsley. Just let that heat through just a little bit. And we're going to add capers, my favorite. I love capers. So whenever I use capers, I almost use twice the amount, but for this purpose we're going to use what's called for today. And there you have it, chicken piccata sauce. And oh, does that smell good? That smells so good. Now what we're going to do is we want to lower, actually we can turn off our, our flame and just let it sit for a few minutes. I'm going to go back to the oven and get our chicken. Here's our chicken. And let me just move these out of the way a little bit. We're going to um, put our chicken on one side a little bit. And we're going to add our sauce. Just put it right over top of the chicken, just like that. Now this is a little bit more sauce for this chicken because we only made chicken for two, where the sauce would go a lot further than that. But I always like a lot of sauce anyhow. It really tastes good combination. I love those capers. They just add something to not only the taste but the look of the whole dish. Okay, there you have it. Now, you can, you can put whatever you like with the chicken, but personally I like to put a pasta. And in this case, we've chosen um,
our fresh spinach pasta, which just looks so delicious. I'm going to put that right alongside of it. That will do it. That's plenty of pasta. I'm just going to take a little bit of lemon and squeeze it over the top. And for those people that really love lemon, I'm going to add a piece or two along the side for garnish. But you can go ahead and add more if you'd like. And here we have it. Chicken piccata with a spin.